Good morning, afternoon, evening, and good dawn, guys. It's a great day to be a ranger. GT Arcade recently released a new rifle system, and it's so sexy. I, I can't believe how much fun I'm having with this. A little rough on the aim, but I'll go over that later. I've had a bit of time to go around and play through, you know, go through my usual uh, 9 to 5 with this weapon to get the basics down, and I wanted to go ahead and bring what I've learned to you guys to save you some time and effort. So go ahead, you know, sit back, relax, we're going to go over the attacks, the tips and tricks, recommended Wild Souls armors, all the usual stuff I do in my guides over the next few short minutes so you can shotgun your... <laughs> That's... <laughs> Oh, um, that's really, I'm sorry. Um, so you can, you know, just be ahead of the crowd. Just give me a second. Don't pause. Press play. So starting off, rifle is the third option of the ranged family of weapons joining staff and bow. Unlike its ranged brothers, early rifle specialize in bursty but precise gameplay that rewards a careful and steady hand, cool decision making, and quick reflexes. Later runes and specializations reward its user with a multitude of different options and tools to dish out the pain. Some pros include a, you know, it being a solid option for those who like keeping their distance. Crouch Fire is amazingly effective at piecing a part of Behemoth from extreme range. Farming lower level monsters is obscenely easy and quick too. It takes me like a minute to get through anything level 35 and below with, you know, ish. Similar to Greatsword, Rifle joins the ranks of highest single hit spike in the game uh, for ranged weapons. It's uh, definitely a heavy hitter when it comes to long range sniping, so snipers rejoice. Its range gameplay leads to a relatively safe, lay back and let other people kind of take the attention type of gameplay. You get a sort of a feeling of security hitting things from so far away until they turn towards you, but again, you have some options to take care of yourself and defend yourself. Which leads me to its uh, next little pro. It has some natural defenses. Uh, tactical maneuver, I'll go over later, but it does have some damage reduction properties that at least give you some kind of feeling of, hey, I can take a hint once or twice. Being a ranged weapon, it has really good range, so it can hit all of the out of reach parts like horns, antenna, and wings. Special ammo gives the rifle versatility, being the only weapon in game that allows you to be a truly dedicated healer with healing ammo. Your second skill as a beginner gives you a solid chorus quarter option, while later rooms open up explosive and gatling options as well. Like bow, you have infinite regular ammo, just don't forget to reload. And aside from one or two cooldowns, rifle trades reloading ammo for having no cooldowns to worry about. And last but not least, it's, it's a freaking rifle. I mean, how many monster hunters out there have been waiting for a true rifle weapon? And please don't give me that, it's medieval times, man, this breaks my immersion. Just, I mean, come on, how far back do rifles go? Stop complaining. Pirates weren't shooting each other with slingshots, right? Let's move on. Now, there are a few cons with this weapon as well. First off, the rifle's new control system is a hybrid of our current system and a mobile shooter. It definitely takes some getting used to. While the initial learning curve may turn some off, I encourage you to stick with it if you really want to learn this awesome weapon. The skill transitions do not feel fluid. Even dodging out of certain skills is a tad glitchy, but the iframes are still there. Reloading is a pain at times and will catch you off guard until you lock further skills down the road. You will require to plan your reloads ahead of time and weave your first skill into close quarters combat play. The rifle does not lock on at all in any way, shape, or form. So all of you bow and staff users who have been relaxing and relying on camera lock will have to adjust to not seeing the behemoth 100% of the time. Sniping requires extremely precise aim. The bullet is tiny at range and it's easy to miss your target. Moving on, let's cover the ammo and attachments. In addition to infinite regular ammo, there are three types of special ammo for rifle, piercing, poison, and recovery. Piercing ammo is like a small drill bit with an explosive attached. The explosive will explode about half a second after hitting your target. This ignores defense and is similar to sticky ammo from Monster Hunter. Poison ammo is a poison based ammo type that so far does regular damage with the poison based. I haven't noticed anything special about this yet. Uh, no dot, nothing like that. Uh, but if you know some kind of special way to use this ammo, please correct me down below. The same thing goes with healing ammo. Uh, heal ammo allows you to heal your allies by shooting them apparently, but I haven't been able to pull this off. Maybe you actually need to use it on actual players and I haven't tested this with anyone yet out yet but in theory you should be able to snipe heal other players making you a dedicated healer for once in the game it's kind of cool all ammo types can be upgraded upon reaching level 30 and level 50 rifle also has mod options accessible by clicking your rifle in your inventory and clicking the attachment tab there are three types of attachments scopes which add maximum effective range to your shots particularly your crouched fire magazines which can add ammo to your clip or reduce your reload time 
and muzzles which reduce recoil. Eventually you can equip 3 mods and all mods and mod slots unlock and upgrade with your weapon level. Now let's cover attacks and mechanics. Your normal attack is a slow normal hip fire shot that does moderate damage and has a big hitbox. Note your third skill turns this into a snipe shot. Your first skill, Tactical Maneuver, makes your character jump back a good 4-5 to five feet while loading one single bullet into your clip. This ability is great for getting out of a tight spot while sniping as it will return you back to sniper mode. This also reduces damage taken during the animation and has a short 6 second cooldown. Do note though it doesn't give you super armor so if you get hit you're still going to fly. Your second skill, Scatter Shot, fires a shotgun fan of pellets at your enemy doing up to 600% damage. This skill has no cooldown, consumes 2 ammo and will fire back to back quickly while holding down the button. Your third skill, Precise Strike, which I've been calling Crouching Fire, please forgive me, makes your character take the need to crouch and fire long range. Your normal attack becomes a snipe shot that deals up to 700% normal damage and takes only 1 ammo. Your shots also increase your ability to expose weak points by 10%. While crouched you can also fire the aforementioned special ammo types, Pierce, Poison and Recovery. You can dodge and use tactical maneuver while in this mode as well. Also note that you don't have to be at a specific up close range for it to work. The only thing that can take down the damage of Precise Strike is being too far. You can Precise Strike right up close to the behemoth's face and still do max damage. Now let's go over some tips and ideas revolving skill use. These are all based on my personal experience and I welcome any input. First up, Scattershot has a secret to it. It says it eats 2 ammo but it really only requires 1 to fire. This leads me to my second tip. Don't be afraid to get in close and dirty with Scattershot and Tactical Maneuver. I call this the Scattershot Shuffle. The Scattershot might eat 2 ammo per use but it only requires 1 to actually fire. Using Tactical to reload, getting that 1 bullet while dodging Behemoth attacks will allow you to weave in Scattershot while in close with the Behemoth. Also, you know, taking advantage of the defense that Tactical Maneuver gives you. With practice and planning, you can go a long while without doing a full on reload and leaving yourself exposed. For those who lean more towards sniping, Tactical Maneuver can be used to double tap targets in quick succession. Simply tap Tactical right after shooting to do a quick reload and fire again right after. This cuts the delay in firing quite a bit and in some cases can be a lifesaver, knowing that well timed behemoth flinch or part break right before it can come after you and an ally. Tip number 4, don't forget to aim your tactical maneuvers. It jumps backwards, away from the direction you're aiming your character. This can be a bit weird to get used to at first, but with practice this becomes comfortable. Tip number 5, you can use sniping shots far outside of behemoth's scream range. This is a great way to start fights by the way, especially against lower behemoths that you're farming and just want to get out the way. Sniping those weak points and breaking them at the right times can render a behemoth broken and beaten long before it even turns around and sees you. Now for armor I prefer to use the clockwork and abomination sets. I imagine most people are familiar with the abomination set so briefly crit is amazing for almost anything that does weak point damage and really gives itself to the precise style of gameplay that the rifle has. Now clockwork is my preferred suit though. Dragon hunting is a wonderful armor skill that ups my damage to dragons while reducing damage I take from them. As for regular behemoths, I am stacking 5% damage boost for every non-dragon part I break. That alone makes this pretty nice for mid-late game and very early game when you fight clockwork the fight for the first time. In addition, I get minor roar tolerance and a 5% damage boost for 20 seconds when a behemoth roars. This is super effective for howler fights, um, you know, he loves doing his little roar, uh, blow away sonic boom thing. You can almost walk through that thing, I've never, ever since I've worn clockwork armor, it doesn't hit me at all, I just get boosted for it, so I'm like thanks for the free power up. Anyway, being able to snipe parts during the 5-6 to six seconds that the behemoth is enraging or roaring is really nice, it gives a nice opening. Just be sure to switch out things when you fight fire types. Clockwork armor is basically kindling. The jury on Wild Souls is quite vast. In addition to the typical terror Tiamat offensive options, Rifle complements many different playstyles. For once, we have a true heal Wild Soul viable weapon. I believe his name is Sir Nunos. He's well known for Lost Isle. He's the heal skill that everyone gets. Uh, he works really well. His stamina and the health and party heal stack really well with the rifle's recovery ammo. This will give you 4 solid methods of healing. Belena works super well with her paralyzed trap and her damage and crit passive. She kinda just screams hunter class. Rifle also works really well with ghost walkers such as Scadia, Victor, and Sharon. Ghost walk's bonus works particularly well with precise fire. Janice and Lilith also are decent options. Now, Janice time warp can fully reload your clip while Lilith's invis circle is great for dropping hate to snipe. 
Time stop is super useful for both of them for isolating weak points for either sniping or blowing things apart with scattershot. And that wraps things up for me guys. I hope this info helps you explore the rifle confidently and with gusto. Uh, with practice this can be a really fun stupid fun weapon and you know I hope you all give it a shot. Thank you all for checking this out and if you found it useful please show it to a friend or a family member that is thinking of checking out this game. As always if you have any extra info I did not cover please leave it in the comments down below so we can all learn together. Love, peace, and hey guys, thanks again for watching my channel today. As a new YouTuber, I just want to take a second to let you know that without you, this dream of mine wouldn't be possible. As usual, if you liked what you saw or learned something, please like, share, and subscribe. And everything you do supports my dream of going full time and serving the gaming community. Also, if you haven't already, drop to my Discord channel and say hi. I love the company, and your ideas do help me improve. Peace and love, guys. Peace and love.